Hello, this is Rex Carden with the University of Alabama at Birmingham, and I'm going to be showing a few tutorials on how to use the Eclipse scripting API within different UI frameworks. Alright, in this tutorial we're going to go over how to use an Eclipse scripting API in Windows Forms. So let's rewind the time scale back to 2005 when Windows Forms was the cool thing to do and we'll go to file new project oh look at it still available Windows Forms if you don't see Windows Forms you can go to Visual C Sharp Windows and then choose Windows Forms I'm gonna call this project ESAPI Forms uh, Battleship Gray how I miss you so if you don't see the toolbox you can go to view toolbox it should be on the left and uh, let's grab some stuff let's do list box here and this is not going to be a fancy application by any means uh, and let's just grab a button and I'm going to change the button text to say load patience cool and I hate that it says form one let's do sappy forms alright so we have a forms project no absolutely no reference to like the very end anything so let's go ahead and do that let's right click and say add references now I'm assuming you're on a box that has the VMS uh, DLLs in it um, you can see I've used them recently here but uh, if you haven't you can go to browse you're going to navigate to C program files x86 Varian vision and then you're going to go to your version number and then the bin 64 folder inside of there and you're looking for two DLLs let's find them one is the API VMS TPS common model API and you're also looking for VMS TPS common model types so I did a control click I got both of those press add you can see they're both check marked press OK now they're in our project I'm gonna build that okay so to use the Varian application context in general you need to be on an STA thread and forms app applications are generally STA thread I think by default they, they all are so we don't have to worry about that that's, that's covered so one question you might have is how do you get the context inside of your form there's a couple of different ways you could do that you could add a public property here to your static program class but I like to add a separate class to handle initializing the Eclipse scripting API link or the context so I'm gonna open a new class I'm gonna call it ESAPI application I press OK and I actually have a tutorial on how to do this part so you can kind of gloss over exactly what we're doing if you head to the Varian Developers Forum over at variandeveloper.codeplex.com and if you're on the home page somewhere up here on the top right now it's on the very top that's because it's brand new uh, you should see something that says new tips for accessing application context from everywhere within your app so if you click on that this shows an example of a singleton wrapper uh, for your um, Varian application. So basically it lazy loads it which means it doesn't actually call the create application method until you need it and then once you've called it once it keeps it in memory and you can call it by uh, this public property called instance and then you grab another property called context of the instance so you don't have to know all that stuff that's just this is a kind of a standard uh, skeleton for doing a singleton uh, instance inside a C-sharp app so you can just copy and paste all this into your code and that's what we're going to do right here so just paste all that we've got all the references in awesome okay so now let's go to our form uh, 
uh, the code behind and let's do this I'm going to declare a namespace I'm going to call it V because this namespace is so long TPS common model API the reason why I'm doing this is because application that class is used by Windows so every time you you say application you have to preface it with the variant namespace and it's just such a long namespace okay let's make a private field we'll call it app and then once the form is being initialized we're going to initialize our application context and if this is for the first time it's going to call the create application method so this is how you do it you do isapi application that's the class we made let's pull in the namespace and then you want the instance and then you want the context from that instance and it'll do all the magic behind the scenes to check and see if there's already an instance that exists and if not it will create one for you okay so now we have loaded our application into our form and we could use it theoretically but let's see what happens here oh no it crashed why is that happening this is really not obvious so that's why I want to go over this let's break it what's happening is that we loaded 64-bit DLLs into our application and our application is being built under the context any CPU which sounds like that should be okay because 64-bit x64 is any CPU isn't it so if you right click you go to properties then you go to build here's the problem there's a checkbox on this prefer 32-bit here so I think if you uncheck that it'll do 64-bit by default but I'm just gonna force it to do 64 so now our our framework here is going to be built on x64 architecture which allows the DLLs to be loaded properly and if it is when we press start it should pop up the authentication yeah there it goes so let's type this in and then go ahead and turn your head away thank you okay so you can't tell but we actually have loaded the application context into the form and we can use it this doesn't doesn't do anything yet because we haven't programmed it okay here's crash number two so get ready for this okay so I told you it was going to happen. I know it was going to happen. What's happening here is that we are not disposing of the application context. So normally when Varian um, shows you how to do this, you're going to do something like this. You'll do like using um, Have you seen this before? If you haven't, this is the kind of the general protocol and then you do all the stuff you want to do in here and then once the using brackets over it disposes the application okay so it kinda of does it all for you since we're using a singleton because we're assuming we're gonna use multiple forms not just one form uh, we want to be a little bit more fine controlled over when the context is getting disposed so in this case this is just a one form object so what we need to do is we need to override a method let's see we do override on closing this one and basically all we need to do is we need to say isapi application dot dispose so when I'm closing the form down it needs to go and check and see if there's an instance created and if there is it needs to dispose of the context because the application is closing and if we do that and we close it all right so you just if you're gonna use my 
idea here of the singleton, you just have to remember that you need to dispose of it whenever the application is closing. So it doesn't have to be when the form's closing, you could also do it on the application itself. Uh, so I think you would do it uh, I think this actually holds here. So you could you could do it, for instance, right here at the bottom of this. Something like, uh, you know, I won't type it out again, but that's the general idea. You want to do it when your application is closing. Where are we? There we are. Okay, so let's do something a little bit more fun. Let's actually make this button do something. So if you double click a button in a Windows Forms app, it'll create a a method that's called when the button is clicked. So what are we going to do? Let's load the last four patients that have been created in the database. So here's how we do that. We do um, we'll take our app context and there's a list in here. It's called patient summaries. And I'm going to use link L-I-N-Q here because it's easy to use. And if you've never used it before, this may look a little strange, but you should be able to read it. So I'm going to take all the patient summaries, I'm going to order them, and you have to name the, your variable, so I'll call it P for patient. And I want to order it by, what do I want to do, creation date, where is that, here. Because I'm going to take the last four patients that have been created. And let's see. I'll take four of them. That's what I said I wanted. And I'm going to select something here. So a select allows me to transform from a patient summary object into something else. I'm going to change these into strings. So let's do something like this string format. Let's do last name, first name, and then how about ID? So P, last name, P, first name, P, ID. And then let's turn it into a list because I think that the list box actually needs it to be a list. And right now, this this executes but it doesn't actually store it anywhere so we probably need to tell it that we want to keep it and we'll keep it as a variable called patients and then that list box was actually the name of that is called list box one there it is and you can set the data source on that to our patients which is a list of strings that are formatted just like this. So I'll do this. And I'll put a line break here so we can see it stop. Okay, let's try it again. This time actually what I'm gonna do oh, I'll just I'll just run this. Alright, so when I press this button, this gets called. You can see that we have four patients. And this is not a HIPAA violation. These are all obviously fake patients. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and continue. We should see in our form that they're all showing up. Okay, so that was uh, just kind of the very basics of how do you get the context into a forms app. How do you dispose of it? And you could imagine that you could have more forms and all of them can access the context from uh, the class that we made.